Hi folks, this is Ben from Ride to VR, and I'm here again with Jeff from Zyson, who has the X-Cope, or is it, you want to call it? X-Cope. Yeah, we'll call it X-Cope. X-Cope. Okay. It's a head-mounted display, uh, smartphone kind of clip-in. Is there is there a more technical term for that? No, just a uh, smartphone headset. Yes. Yeah, so you pop your phone on the top, and then you you know you get the benefit of having the screen and the gyro and the processing all right in your HMD platform without having to hook up to a computer. So can you tell me a little bit about how this is different than some of the other products and other approaches out there? Um, I mean, as far as uh, smartphone head-mounted displays, uh, this one has the stereo lenses, uh, which gives you your standard stereoscopic virtual reality experience, uh, which uses a split screen um, where with you know two of the same image that your mind blends together to give you 3D. But then we also have the mono lens that you can remove this, the stereo lens, pop in the mono lens, and then it works on virtually any app as long as it's in landscape and, you know, and it works in a headset, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, and also the um, on the bottom here you have little ports. For right, right. The touch access ports, uh, so that if you get an on-screen alert or if you're in a menu of a game, uh, you can reach in and touch the screen to to proceed. You don't have to slide the phone out and do whatever. You can even load content while it's already in if you want to switch from one movie to a game or something like that. And what would you say is the most compelling experience so far with the prototype and with the content available? <clears throat> um, Probably augmented reality. Uh, a lot of people seem to really enjoy the, the augmented reality aspect of it. Um, virtual reality, I think, eventually may sort of surpass the experience of augmented reality, but right now, for Android, there's not a lot of split-screen uh, virtual reality stuff available. So, Now, when I was testing it uh, with the HTC One, some of the demos, one of the demos that we saw Shadowrun was, was high frame rate, the tracking felt really good, and um, you, know, you can see that the experience is definitely possible mm -hmm. with that kind of hardware. Uh, with the different devices that you've tested it with, did you find that experience the same across all of them, or do you kind of is there a threshold you need? Um, well, the smaller the screen, uh, sort of the more the more limited the the experience is. Um, we've tested it with the Galaxy S3 and Galaxy S4. Both of them performed uh, well, just as well as the HTC One. Um, uh, it's going to work with things all the way down to like the iPhone 4, but the screen on that is significantly smaller, so it's going to give you a, a more limited experience, but uh, as far as the internals, the gyroscope and the head tracking and all that, they all seem to be, they all seem to perform pretty well. High-end phones tend to perform pretty well. What do you have in mind for more features or, or any changes that are going to differ from the prototype you have now to what you actually would like to ship? Right, the, um, the lens focusing is going to be improved. Right now, it focuses left to right, but it, there's no uh, focal depth that you can change, so that's going to be adjusted in the next prototype, which will eventually be uh, into the production. Um, the, uh, the, the comfort of it, right now, it's relatively comfortable, um, but we're just sort of perfecting you know, how much foam padding to use and, and that sort of stuff. So it's basically kind of comfort in general. What are you doing to help spur content, which is kind of what's badly needed on these right. smartphone approaches? Well, right now we're um, contacting developers, uh, sort of giving them a heads up that it's coming and sort of getting people interested. Uh, we're going to be offering some exclusives for launch, you know, like uh, either when the, sh when the product launches, we'll, you, know, you can launch a game or an app in conjunction with that launch to sort of get it out there and get it known. Um, we're going to be uh, highlighting some developers in the actual Kickstarter campaign, and then our website or our company will highlight things beyond that. Um, you know, get games out there and known. Now, have you done any development yourself to, for content, or are you purely not yet a hardware guy? Um, right now, I have uh, some app development background. Um, I've developed for iOS and for Android. Uh, since I started development on the hardware of this, I haven't done much as far as software goes, um, but I would like to. I'm eventually going to be, I've got a couple of different augmented reality things in mind um, that I'm going to be working on. 
Yeah. So tell us your plan for the Kickstarter, at least uh, kind of an overview. When sure. are you hoping to get these out there? Uh, we're hoping to launch the Kickstarter um, within the next week, uh, and then it's going to be a 30-day Kickstarter. Um, the final product we're hoping to ship in uh, end of March, early April. And you said you were hoping to manufacture those here rather than overseas? Right. We're hoping to do, uh, we're talking to a manufacturer in New Jersey that we're going to be working with. So what will be the cost for people who want to get in on the Kickstarter? And what are the different uh, things that you'll be offering? Sure. The um, To actually get the device, the earliest uh, people that, that can get it will be the early bird special, basically. They can get it for, I believe, $55. Uh, developers uh, can get get it for sixty dollars along with being into the, uh, the developer forum and uh, everybody else it's going to be around seventy dollars and do you have any any things that any apps or content that you'd specifically like to see that isn't out there yet um, basically more uh, full-fledged VR games uh, there's some demos that we showed you know but uh, so far there's not any real full full-fledged virtual reality games. Mm -hmm. so. And aside from just talking to developers, are you going to be doing anything to try to encourage them to, to really get there and, and hone that experience? Are you going to work with them to get something that really works well? Yeah, yeah. Through the developer forum, I'll be active on the developer forum, and um, hopefully everyone will collaborate and sort of share tips and tricks on how to get it looking good. The developers will also get uh, their actual unit before the retail units ship. And do you see any, are you going to be changing the design from what people are getting in the Kickstarter to retail, or? Hopefully not, no. It's, it's going to be pretty much, we have, uh, after this, I've got one more prototype that I think addresses <clears throat> just about everything else that I want to address, and then that's going to basically be the model for the retail unit. And you said for now you're using a Fresno lens on the mono eyepiece, um, but you currently have glass lenses. They're currently, they're currently glass lenses in the stereo, but they're, they're probably going to end up being acrylic. They're, they'll still be uh, plano convex, but they're, they'll be acrylic instead of glass. And have you noticed, have you tested them as acrylic instead of glass? I've tested some acrylic. Um, they weren't exactly what I wanted. They weren't exactly the right size to fit um, in the, the prototype how it is now. Um, but yeah, I've tested acrylics and, and they perform just as well as, as the glass does in my experience. Jeff, thanks a lot for coming to show us the Xscope, and we'll be looking for the Kickstarter. Good luck. All right, thanks for having me. Yeah.